what I have in front of me is some of my Little League film. I'm taking y'all back 16 years, 15, 14 years. I got film from 06, 07, and 08. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, cool. I'm here. Welcome back, Route Runners TV, season one, episode four. Man, I decided to take y'all back. Um, what I have in front of me is some of my Little League film. I'm taking y'all back 16 years, 15, 14 years. I got film from 06, 07, and 08. But um, no, what I really wanted to do, man, is just uh, motivate and encourage the younger generation that's you know, in the same situation that I was once in, you know, starting with just a dollar in a dream, you know what I mean? And um, hopefully this inspires everybody, you know, to beat the obstacles in front of them. Because, you know, here at the Route Runner brand, that's what we all about, beating obstacles. So, you know, let's get it. Coconut Grove versus Richmond Heights. Um, two down South teams. Uh, plan, but this particular year, this was the last year, 2008. This was my last year of little league football, and um, usually your last year of little little league football, you're like 13, 14 years old. I don't know how much y'all know about um, little league football, but you do a weigh in, and so when we was doing the weigh in versus this particular team, shout out to my coach, Coach Zo, he was our head coach. Um, you look at how much the kids weigh and you look at their age. Everybody has a birth certificate. Um, so we're doing the weigh-in, we're doing the weigh-in, and Coach Zoe is like, he, he let a couple kids slide, but then he noticed like all the kids that they had were too old. So he was like, um, he was like, hey, yo, partner, uh, man, all these kids too old. They ain't supposed to be playing. And then the opposing coach was like, so what you gonna snitch? And Coach Zo, he was like, a, he, Coach Zo, he was, yeah, he was like that. So Coach Zo was like, man, I ain't never snitched on a, in my life. You know, he used more harsh words, but he was like, man, I ain't never snitched. He, he got, he got riled up. He was, he was mad. So he let it slide. And so, um, you know, throughout the game, I'm thinking about this. These kids was like, 16, 17 years old, they were, they were the kids in high school who didn't really have the grades, but they still wanted to play football at the time. Um, so this particular play, it, it, it was a big play in the game on the very first drive of the game. And uh, when I catch the ball and I score the touchdown, you can see me doing the same celebration I do now, handing the ball to the ref, but I'm shaking my head. And I'm shaking my head, what I'm really saying is, it don't matter how old they is. They could be 17, they could be 18, they could be 21. It don't matter. So let's get into it. Here it is right here. <laughs> Chestnut, shout out to Chestnut. Oh man. So Chestnut just threw it up. He just, threw, he, he trusted in me because we had ran to have that pass a lot. He said, I'm just gonna put it somewhere that he could get it. Throws the ball up in the air as high as he can. And there's three guys over there. I go up and I catch it. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna see the part again where I just, I just get a ball to the ref, same thing I do now, but I'm just shaking my head like, it don't matter. They could be 21 out here, I'm ready. This was, this was the year, I was 14 years old. This was the year where I really felt like, like this, this, I knew I would be a playmaker in the league at this point. This was the year. So I was full of confidence. Play number two, Sunnyland versus the New Birth Saints. So, um, just a quick backstory. We played for a park called Sunnyland for one year. You know, our, um, something happened with Coconut Grove. I think they didn't have the funds or something happened with the commissioner. It, it was something to where everybody had to relocate. So 
you know, some people went to Sunnyland, which is further down south in Miami. Some people went to Overtown. Some people went to Richmond Heights. Um, I decided to go to Sunnyland. So the team we playing New Birth, they, they were just known for being one of the sorriest teams to play. So everybody would just pass stats against them. Um, and as the name alludes to New, New Birth Saints, they were a church team. So everybody who played for their team, they went to church at New Birth. Um, and they just didn't really have the athletes, man. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I got a reverse and I, I just took it to the crib. Um, just patting stats. So there I go, number two. Turn it up. <laughs> and I'm gone. I was, man, I, I mean, I'm still fast, but. Ooh, you see that stride? Yeah. So number two is like the most coveted number in Pop Warner. You know, all, all the good players obviously wanted to wear a single digit number, but um, you know, you had number one, number two, number three, number four. Those was like the numbers, number five, I mean number seven. But it would always be like, nine times out of 10, one of the best players on the team gonna have number two. So this particular year, I wanted number two. And they said, um, they said, uh, so Sunnyland Park was a big park, but you know, before practice to warm up, we would run a whole lap around the park and then we would stretch. And the coaches said the best words I had heard up to that point. They was like, um, all right, y'all, we're going to run, we're going to run a lap around the field then we're going to get our jerseys. So me. As, as I alluded to before, track was my first sport. And I used to go to the Junior Olympics for the mile. So I was very well conditioned. So when he said that, I'm like, I put two and two together, okay. Whoever come around here first, they gonna get that jersey number first. So I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Now I know my best friend, Chestnut, I know he want number two. But I want number two too. We all, a lot of people want number two. But he had had it the year before. He had number two, two the year before, and I think I had number, I don't, I don't even remember what number, I think I had number three or something. So boom, I'm gone. I'm looking back, and Chestnut, he ain't no long distance runner, so I know he ain't nowhere to be found, but I still gotta be careful, somebody else might be behind me. So I finished first like how I usually do, <laughs> and we got in the line. Everybody got in the line, um, according to where they finished at. And uh, I picked that number two, he was mad. <laughs> He was mad when I, I needed that. So yeah, that's how I got number two. Then I, I ended up wearing it in high school and now I got it now for the Browns. So um, it all comes full circle. I knew I was gonna be cold. Okay. So earlier when I made the play, um, when I was playing 160, when I was 14 years old, here I was 12. And I told y'all that when I made that catch over those three, those three players, that was the year I knew I was gonna be a playmaker in the league. But this year right here, when I was 12, this is when I knew I would make the league. You see what I'm saying? So like, um, there was a situation with our, with our cornerback coach. <laughs> we, was getting, we was getting prepared to play the first game. I was like uh, doing releases on our starting cornerback. And our, our, our cornerback coach, he, he, he started getting mad. He was like, man, you know how we gonna guard their receivers? We can't, we can't get it right in practice. And he was trying to show him how to do it. Now he was like, hey man, listen, this is how you do it. You get in this, and mind you, he was athletic. Like he used to wear cleats to practice. He had played college football and everything. <laughs> so I'm 12. I'm like, this is how you do it. He's like, Mario, come on, do it again. I said, hut, boom. <laughs> he jumped that way, I go this way. He was like, oh shit. He was like, you better do that in the game. And I swear, at 12 years old, that's when I knew I would make the leap because I figured like, I knew I could do it against everybody my age, you know what I'm saying? But if I could do this against a guy who's, he, he was probably my age at the time, he's probably 28. If I could do this against a guy who's a grown man, who's athletic, man, ain't no telling where I could go with this. So this next play, same team, new birth. Um, I'm at safety. This was around the time Sean Taylor Sean Taylor died. And I can remember guys coming to school crying. 
that's how big of an influence he had. So, you know, this is my first year playing safety, actually. So I played safety and receiver this year, but previous, prior to that, I used to only play like receiver. And then one year I played quarterback, and then this year I played a little bit of quarterback, moved around a little bit. But it was all about hit sticks, hit sticks, hit sticks, hit sticks. So, um, you know, I had that in mind when I made this play. Came down, kind of like slow played it at first, and then when I saw the opportunity, boom! And then when everybody say, ooh, you know you had a big one. So let me play this one. They ran a little quarterback. I, uh, closed in on him. <laughs> you see, I had the Mike Vick cleats too. Cause I, I, I don't know, Mike Vick was big, man. Honestly, like, I, I was such an offensive-minded player, always have been. I never was really, I never really cared about getting a big hit for real. Like I played safety for one reason. That's to catch a pick and take it to the house. Like I was, I wanted to score. That's why I'm a receiver, I wanted to score. But uh, since I was at safety, you know, when the, when the opportunities came, yeah, I, I mean, I let Headache, we had a linebacker named Headache. Shout out to Headache. We had a linebacker named Headache. They called him Headache for one reason, because when he hit you, you're gonna get a headache. So I let Headache take care of all the dirty work. Um, and they didn't really usually get past Headache when they ran the ball, but if they did, you know, I was gonna lay a little bit of wood, yeah. But believe it or not, man, this year I caught like 10 picks and I took like maybe six of them back, seven of them back. We played a, we played another team called Palmetto. We played them three times. They was the best team that year. We actually lost to them in the championship. But every time we played them, I caught a pick. They had a real good receiver slash tight end. They used to move him around named Poochie. And I'm talking about he scored every game. And I knew about him. I'm at safety. I'm like, nah. That's gonna look bad on me if he score on us. So against us, he scored one time, but it wasn't on my side. But every time they threw a bomb, I'm coming down with it. Um, so I was actually real. I was actually a real good ball hawk. That's why I play receiver. Just a real good ball hawk, um, and I was actually a real good safety too. Like I was a for sure tackler. Ain't nothing. Ain't nobody getting. Once I get. Once I got you, you got. So I, I could have definitely. Um, been a great safety but it never even really crossed my mind to say I'm gonna be a safety like that never even I never even thought about that so we going back to coconut grove so this is 2007 this is actually the year I hurt my knee this is the only game I played that year I was out for the rest of the season but as you can see we walking out We playing this game in our practice jerseys. Look how big, you know, the practice jerseys with the little holes in them. So our jerseys hadn't come in yet. I think this year Frank sponsored the park. Frank Gore sponsored the park, but our jerseys ain't come in because Frank, Frank from Coconut Grove. Our jerseys ain't come in yet. So we got to play in our practice jerseys. Everybody playing in their practice jerseys. Even the little league guys who jumping around, they got on practice jerseys. And, I, and it was big. Like they was like back in the day type, type deal. Uh, shout out to the Grove. I just actually, um, donated some jerseys to the park you know they're gonna have a route runner emblem on them and everything like that but now nah, we uh we playing Sunnyland. i caught a pick i took it to the crib didn't get the whole play but we got the tail end where I, I catch it i'm returning and i cut back and i go and i score um another interesting tidbit from this play man my mom my mom, I, my mom never saw me play football until my senior year in high school. So I was 17, and I started playing organized football around like six or seven. So for 10 years of me playing, my mom had never seen me play football. And it was not because she didn't want to, it was because she was always hecka busy. <laughs> like, she was always working overtime, she was always working on weekends, everything like that. But this particular game, right, I think she had just got off of work. And um, I think she was looking for like one of my sisters. She knew they was on the park because everybody was on the park. And then you hear the music playing in the background. And she could hear the music because our, our, our home was like literally a minute walk from here. So she knew they was on the park. I think she was looking for one of my sisters. She just got off of work. We just so happened to be playing. I take this pick back. One of my coaches is like, look who's out here. Because, you know, they she never was at the game. Look who out here. And my mom was standing right there, like waiting on my sister to come. 
And I was like, oh, shoot, my mom just seen me score a touchdown. Because this was like my, I was 13 here. So this was like my sixth year playing football. She, had, she used to always hear the stories. That boy scored two touchdowns. That boy scored a touchdown last week or this week. But I saw her actually see me. Um, and I don't know how long. I know she wasn't out there the rest of the game because I was looking for her. She wasn't there. But I know she saw me on that play, and that was that. That was cold. That was cold. All right, so here it is. They in shotgun. I'm waiting. Like the thing about it is, um, you gonna be able to hear it on all the picks that I catch. Oh, there it go. You see that number eight? He gone. Go all the way, Coop. They say Coop. Look at Juju. Shout out to Juju, number 54. <laughs> Juju played linebacker for us. I mean, he was, let me rewind it. He smacking dudes. He ain't even have to hit dude. I had already scored. And you see, I had already scored. But the dude was just lounging around, just standing around. That's why you never just stand around on a football field. Bro, that's her. <laughs> you can't really see it clear. That's her though, in that in that light greenish shirt. Ah, right. Ah, you gotta. There she go waving. That's her. That was her. That was her. <laughs> That's crazy. Play number five, Sunnyland versus Palmetto Bay. They used to be called Coral Reef, changed their name to Palmetto Bay. And um, this particular team, they was always like, it was always tough, real disciplined team. And anybody who played football or, or any sport, they know how tough it is to be the, a real disciplined team. And on top of that, they had a player, man. Number two, I told y'all about the numbers. Number two, Treshawn Ward. Shout out to Treshawn Ward, man. Treshawn was cold. Like, shout out to him. It wasn't unusual for him to score three, four, five touchdowns a game. And so you knew you was going to have to stop him. But they had so many plays. I mean, reverses, trick plays, counters. Like, they had so many different plays. Moved them all over the field. It was going to be hard to stop. So this particular year, I had number two, too. So it was like... It's me against Treshawn Ward, you know what I'm saying? And um, this play, he had linebacker, like, and I'm at quarterback. I got the Mike Vick cleats on. I'm at quarterback. So you already know what time it is. And I see him, and he was fast, and I was fast. So I'm like, I'm about to run his way. Hopefully somebody block him. But if not, I'm going to have to shake him. I'm going to have to outrun him. So check this out, right? Boom. They ain't really got the whole play. You just going to see me. Elbows. I roll out. There you go, Trayshawn. He got blocked. So now I'm gone. I'm running. And you see, I'm I'm almost about to fall. I'm running. I'm trying to run so fast. I know Trayshawn is fast. I'm like, man, it'll be a shame if I get caught by Trayshawn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm running. I'm running my fastest. And you know, when you running hard, you you damn about to stumble because I know Trayshawn is somewhere behind me. Is he chasing me? I don't know. I seen him get blocked, because that's the only person I'm really worried about. But uh, I'm just running full speed, and I'm gone. So boom, same game. Sunnyland versus Palmetto Bay. Me and Treshawn still going at it. I got to make I gotta make more plays. I know Treshawn, I know Treshawn probably going to score three, four, five times. So I'm at quarterback. It's a roll out to the left, and we got a receiver, another receiver. It was me and Davies. We was, we was the receivers. We was cold. And I got to roll out. He got a corner route. And uh, I roll out, throw the corner route. And uh, he wide open. And I just put it on the money to him. Yep, I roll to the left. <laughs> I throw the corner. <laughs> Those guys, you know, the fields is all muddy. Those guys, like, they, they fell in the mud or something. But maybe Davies just routed them boys. Because Davies, he was cold. He was cold. Like, when I, when I wasn't that quarterback throwing to him, um, you know, I was that receiver getting the ball thrown to me. So 
So lastly, I want to show, man, championship game against Palmetto. Not Palmetto Bay, Palmetto. And they was, I got to give it to them. They was the best team this year. And we just couldn't, we, this is our third time playing them. The first game, they kind of got the best of us. The second game, it was real close. But they still won. So this game, we like, we going to win. And we scored first. You know what I mean? And it was kind of sick zip for a long time. And the thing about um, this game, coaches just kept harping on it. Every play, every play. Watch out for the fake. Watch out for the fake. Watch out for the fake. So I was ready for it. Um, and they was trying to throw the poochie. And um, I intercepted it. <laughs> I was supposed to take it to the crib. They throw it to Poochie deep. Shout out to Poochie. <laughs> I shake him. <laughs> Somebody try to tackle me. I hop over him. I fix my face mask. I'm trying to go for six. But nah, but they was cold. They end up, I think they, they won a championship. And uh, I want to say they, they won it all that year. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Because once you win a championship in your city, now you go up the road. You're trying to win the whole thing in Florida. You're trying to win the whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, the reason I wanted to share this, man, I just wanted to share my story with you guys um, and just take y'all back. I hope y'all are excited or as excited to watch this as I am. Because, again, like I said, uh, this is Route Runners TV. This is Route Runner, the brand. And, uh, you know, we just want to encourage and motivate everybody to be a route runner because you can beat the obstacles in front of you. You are a route runner. And throughout this whole episode, man, I just wanted to show y'all and give y'all an example. Like this year when I played for Sunnyland, man, you know, the Grove didn't have a park. My mom ain't have a car. So if I really wanted to play football, I had to go and play for another park. You know what I mean? And travel 30 minutes to go play football every day. Um, and come home late at night and still go to school the next day. So if I really wanted to play, that was the obstacle I had to beat. You know what I'm saying? And then the next year after this, so this is 06, 07. Um, I showed y'all the game. I catch the pick. I take it to the crib. But in that same game, I hurt my knee. I was out for five months, man. So I was out for the rest of the season. I cried in the hospital like a baby. But um, I had to beat that obstacle. And then that next year, 08, where I showed y'all I caught the, the go route over three defenders. That was me coming up off, coming up out of that injury saying, you know what, like, this ain't over for me. Like, I'm still going to be a, 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 a dog. And I had to really work through. I had a cast from my ankle all the way to the top of my thigh. And it was, so when I, when I took that cast off after four and a half, five months, my leg was literally stuck like this. It was stuck. So I had to rehab it to where I was able to, um, this stretch right here, where I was able to do this stretch like this. Cause I couldn't even move it like this when I first took the cast off. So, um, you know, I had kept hearing like, you know, usually when people have a full leg cast for, for that long, they never really the same again and stuff like that. So 08, I was, I, I was trying to prove a point, like, nah, I'm still the same player. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to take y'all back um, and, and just tell y'all my story, what obstacles I beat and everything like that, uh, because it was definitely some obstacles to beat.